So we've got until uh we can just we can vibe until until your boy has to go. Um oh wait one second, I need to fix this. Whenever I do the YouTube learning stuff, I need to remember to move it above the loop pedal. Cause sometimes I realize in some of the times I've been learning these songs, I have um I've uh I'm like learning it on the guitar and then the fucking YouTube's covering my fingers. So people who are like, how does he do that? And it's just like, ah, that was a bit of an oversight. I'm very sorry. Okay, well, one second. One thing I have to do is, let me just fix my phone. Um, okay. Okay, let me get this. Okay, so my car is getting fixed. And so we can stream and just learn stuff and have heaps of fun. Uh, until until my car gets fixed. Is that cool? Because they will call me and they'll be like, yo, we're picking you up now. And I'm like, okay, thanks. And then I got to go get my car. No, the dead car is dead. It's gone. Uh, we, we, get, we, we went to the mechanic and we said, hey, like, just take this car. Um, what it, what's it going to cost? And I think he paid us a thousand bucks and he kept the car and then he scrapped it for parts. So that was a good deal. Good deal. All right, let's learn the song. Um, you want me to learn the acoustic one. The reason why I don't want to learn the acoustic one is because then I'm copying John Mayer's acoustic thing and I like picking up on the production elements. So I want to hear what the bass is doing, what the drums are doing. Typically when John Mayer does acoustic performances of stuff, he kind of like does the guitar part and sometimes he does really, really cool ones. So I really like to pick up on all the other elements because that's how I will recreate it for myself. Uh, but that's just me. I mean, everyone's different. Uh, if you want to copy exactly what he does, go ahead. All right, everyone. I don't know how to do this one. Do, 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 do. Oh, I do know how to do this. I could get like, I could get a sampler. I have a thing that samples and it does claps for us. And we can do the, we can do the. I already nailed it. We just got the first part of the song. It's just claps. Hell yeah. Take it to the movie show day. I have never played on a left hand acoustic before. Maybe once. Four to one. I love I love this early early John Mesa. Is whatever he does there. later Richard it's lovely to see you thank you so much for hanging out with us today
on him This calm I can't explain Now the is melted And only diamonds now Bro, is this like a complete loop one? So it's like it's just like a four three uh, four three six, and this album, do you hear that snare hit? Oh, so sexy! It's like <laughs> everything about like this shit is so good. Ah, oh, he just doesn't miss. These people are so serious too. <laughs> Wiggle shirt. What? I love how you were saying crazy how young this man was when he did it. I know, right? But this is the thing, John Mayer, Ed Sheeran, Taylor Swift, the one thing that they had in common, a lot of these artists, especially when they make it, they just did not give a fuck. You feel like you're late to the music. Flame, you're only as late as you practice. If you want to be like John Mayer, I, I fucking kid you not, you could easily, like when I say easy, it's easy to do this. Do you know how easy this is? Wake up every fucking day and practice for six to eight hours a day and you will do this by the time you're 21. I kid you not. Like you underestimate, everyone underestimate, like they overestimate what they can do in like a month and then they underestimate what they can do in five to 10 years. You have no idea how fast you can get here. It's just purely time, just how hard do you work and that's it. Like you're, you're 18 now. Like if you practice for three years every single day for six to eight hours a day, like your full-time job, you will get here. I, there's no, there's no, no doubt about it. A hundred, I mean, and do you know why I know this? Because I'm going to do it too. Like I'm going to sit, oh, I, didn't, I didn't haven't even subscribed to John Mayer. I'm going to subscribe to him. Yay. 19 in a week. There you go, dude. Like, he was 19 when he, was, when he started writing. Like John Mayer was like 19 when he started writing songs. So he just wrote songs every day and wrote and wrote and wrote and played and played and played and sang and sang and sang and wrote and wrote and wrote and played and played and played. And like the other thing is like the thing to, to, get, to get, yeah, but it, he didn't write, it wasn't just him. The, the guy that he worked with, right? Um, I always forget his name, was a super, super good muso as well. Um, Clay, uh, not, uh, shit, I don't know what his name is. Uh, Neon John Mayer. Uh, where is he at? So the Room for Squares album was co-written with another guy. Um, do, 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 do. Clay Cook. Boom. So this dude, crazy good musician. Crazy good. So he was finishing Berkeley, and then he was like, yo, fuck it, John, let's leave. I mean, I don't know the exact conversation, but um, this guy, incredible musician. Really, really good. And then him and John left and moved to Atlanta together. And the other thing, so... This is the craziest thing for music. This is for everyone from beginner to professional. There's only two ways to do, like there's, 
there's two ways you go about music. You're either going to play music and you're going to like fumble in the dark and keep learning slowly, slowly. Um, or you can be like John Mayer and Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran. And what happens is they would hit levels and then as soon as they're plateauing, they upskill to another level. They, they find people that are better than them and they learn from them. If you look at John Mayer, like he went to Berkeley, immediately pivoted in his approach and was like, all right, I need to learn how to write songs. Then he's friends with Clay Cook. Then he goes to Atlanta and then he's gigging and playing in cafes. And then he's meeting up with David Ryan Harris, all these great songwriters that are doing all that stuff. Like, dude, it's your birthday tomorrow, Dylan. I, was, I thought it was on the weekend. Oh yeah, tomorrow's Friday. What the fuck? Dude, you're turning 40. Wait. Yeah, and so it's like, that is all it is. It's just upskilling all the time. So basically, that's my plan. My, my straight up plan is if I can make the school successful and then I can make the stream successful and then all I have to do is just stay at home, like stay in the studio and practice. That's all I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to take care of my family and practice. So if I can make my living practicing, then I've, I've won the game. Like I've, I've made it. Like to me, that's what making it is, is if every day I show up, and I get better at my craft, I'm making more money. And then I take care of my family. And then with the surplus money, because money doesn't mean shit. Money just takes care of, like at a certain point, money means you don't have to worry about life. And I need to get to that point. Um, so then I don't have to worry about life. So like anything my wife needs or my kids need or any emergency things that happen, I'm like completely taken care of. There's a cyclone. When I say cyclone, that shit has happened. Like in January, we had a fucking cyclone come through and we're panicking because we're like, how do we afford all our living expenses and then to deal with all these trees that have fallen down and all this shit. Um, so it's like, that shit's real. And so basically, if you can get to the point where you financially don't have to worry about anything, then all you do is practice. But if you're young and you have a lot of your means taken care of for you all you do is sit there and practice and then you build the skills that will make money and then you will make money and then you just keep practicing <laughs> and then all these all these artists have done is they've been put in positions where they worked really really hard they made this they got the skills and then they made money and then all they did was they upskilled and they got better skills and they played with better writers and they play with better musicians what did this guy do as soon as he wrote his two first two albums? He picked up the best bass player in the world and the best drummer in the world, Pino Palladino and Steve Jordan. Like, I mean, there are elements of luck, but if you, the, you got to think of it like, how do I eliminate all elements of luck? And there's only one way. You just work really hard. Just be like, what does Ed Sheeran do? Okay, I'm going to do double that. And then you will start eliminating luck. Were the mats busy? Yeah, I'm trying not to to bother them. We got a we got a wedding on Saturday, and um and Matt hurt his back. Jacob McNitt, I do love country. Do you want me to play a country song? Just give me one sec. So it is a flat three. So much wasted in the afternoon Okay, so this is really, really cool. So he does, um... I like to figure out why, why is he writing it this way? And I will wait to find If it lasts forever
So he's going for a B. So I would, I'm wondering where he's going with this. So he's dropped into the key of A flat. seven somewhere. And what is that leading to? Mm. Way to find. That's a really pretty bridge. So much wasted in the afternoon. So pretty much the song is just a four to one in the verse and the pre-chorus. And then he's going to do um, a chorus where he's going to do the four, three, six. So if we're going to do in the actual chords, like the letter names, if we're going to do the actual letter names of this, uh, so a four chord is a G here. And then to his, so he's doing like a G and he's alternating from a G major seven. And then he's going to a, a D. So you can either do an open D chord or you could do a D major seven like this. So you do like a, like a C major shape. You just take your, you take your middle finger off. So you're doing like a C shape. If you're doing cage system or you do a D major seven like this. And if you want to be super spicy, you can do D major nine. I look around, major seven, ooh. And I'm just bound my anchor down. And I down the bat to the dead out of now. I would have been bat bound that door. I don't know if he does the second pre chorus there, does And then the chorus is super simple. It's just a four, three, six. And so it's like a major, G major to a F sharp minor, and then a B minor. Ooh, super sexy. 
too fine This will last forever And I will pay no mind Cause it won't and it won't Because it can Close to And then back to you, 4-1 G to the D Um, and then when we get to the bridge um, it's a very very pretty I don't know how I would analyze it properly but I like to think of things still in the key so he's moving into a different key but I like to think of it, um, it as like modal interchange not like a full on key change even though it is a key change um, he's jumping into a different key but I like to think of it still within the space of where I'm jamming in. So that's how I'm going to analyze it. So, so if D is my one chord, then what we're doing is we're doing a flat three major seven, which is going to be an F major seven. And then we're going to be doing a flat six major. So you can do another flat six major or like this. And like the reason why I think of this as major uh, as like a as a modal interchange is because if that yeah let's think of it as major modal interchange not a key change because this is a major seven I believe I'm, if it's a major seven then then it's not a key change yeah okay so he's doing a major seven there there's like that harmony is sitting there quite cleanly it's not like a not a dominant seven so it's not a key change so he's using modal interchange which is something that he does all the time. So basically what he's doing is he's borrowing. So if you guys have watched my, uh, my basic music theory course, um, we go into numbers. So that means like, I, I know this is going to be a bit complicated for some people, but trust me, it will make sense, hopefully. And if it doesn't make sense, then I suck. <laughs> so basically what he's doing is he's borrowing chords from other major scales. So in the key of D, which he's in, he's got these chords. He's got D. E minor, and then he's got F sharp minor, G major, A major, and then B minor. And so all of those chords, those are all the diatonic chords of his key. Now, he's going to borrow chords that don't actually fit in the key of D, but in, they're in the key of different modes. So if I was playing in the key of, well, uh, so like with this one, this first major chord that he plays here, which is going to be the F major 7, comes from the key of C, which is the key of D Dorian. So this is very fucking weird, right? So he's using modes. So D Dorian, instead of playing D major, he's playing D Dorian and he grabs this bad boy. Ooh, so sexy. And then he grabs this chord. So he's basically doing some very, very cheeky jazz, not jazzy stuff, but he's just doing what we call modal interchange. So he's borrowing chords from other major scales that fit within his D key. So he picks the key D and he's like, okay, if I'm playing D Dorian, which is like, then he's like, okay, well, I'm gonna add that chord. So he is going to borrow these different chords from different like scales. Um, so that's all he's doing. So if you're wondering how he went, how he got that shit, that's how he did it. So, he, so he's borrowing a flat three major seven. And then he's blowing a flat six major seven. So that's an F major seven down to a uh, B flat major seven. And then he's doing an E flat major seven, which is a flat two major seven. And then back to flat three and then flat six and then flat two. And then this is him trying to, trying to bring us back into the key. He drops down to a flat seven, uh, sorry, just down to a seven major seven. And then he slides it back up to the one. So he's just doing major sevens. So he's doing F major seven, B flat major seven, E flat major seven. And then he sneaks down to D flat major seven, or we'll call it like, I, I should have kept it all in the same shops, but whatever. I don't give a shit about theory. Um, as I'm explaining modal interchange. <laughs> and then all you're gonna do is just slide up back to the D. And then back to your G. And then you go into the chorus of the G, 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 F sharp, B minor, four, four, three, six. 
And so that's, that's what's being done. Does that make sense? Tom, 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 you're not a subscriber anymore? Wow. I thought, I thought Tom would be OG, subscriber for life. Even Keely's subscriber for life. You've been here so long. I can't believe you lost your title. Damn. Irony. So yeah, so if you're wanting to play this song, sounds like some of the changes. Uh, not really. Neon is actually super diatonic, if you were wondering. Di neon is like really simple. Neon is like, Neon, he literally just goes like six, one, two, three, four. He like literally moves up the diatonic scale. Um, the thing that makes Neon harmony so crazy is that it's the, the chord voicings that he comes up with. They're so beautiful. Um, that's the beauty of Neon. So he's not actually doing a lot of fancy like technical things, but he's being really... The, the, the thing when you're writing songs... <laughs> you had to cut off your TikTok spend. <laughs> Tom, I'm so sorry. Uh, you got to pay for, the, for, your, for, your, uh, for your pilot stuff. It's okay. I forgive you. As long as you keep bringing in a, a little heart me each day, just to be like, I still love you. Um, yeah, so the thing that when, when it comes to writing, so whenever you're writing songs, and this is why John Mayer is amazing, um, it's a balance. Like you got to figure out how much are you bringing in and how much are you taking out? Because when John May is writing songs, he's thinking about what's the song, like how can I be good for the song and then how can I write a song that other people enjoy? Now you've got to remember during this time when John Mayer was making music, you've got Alicia Keys, you've got, I mean, let's look at this. So like you've got to remember how you were writing music. And so like let's go Billboard, Billboard, Hot 100, 2009. So this came out uh, October. So 2009. Hot 100 singles of 2009. Let's have a look who were the artists that were pumping out here. Let's see if John Mayer was on here. Wow. What a time to be alive. So John Mayer didn't even make it on the thing. So let's go October. Uh, Billboard Hot 100 October 2009. So let's see. Jay Xiong. Party in the USA. I wonder. So at the time that John Mayer was releasing music, like when heavier things came out, right? We've got, oh, Zach Brown Band was in here, Colby Collette. So she's a pretty, pretty cutesy music, if memory serves. I'm not like super, super onto this one. Wow, country music was still pumping back then. Luke Bryan, got Mariah Carey, Sean Kingston. Muse Uprising, let's go. Alicia Keys. So, so the time, I don't know if I'm getting my point across very clearly, but let's go back. Let's go Billboard. Okay. Singles here, Hot 100 singles of 2009. You've got I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. Very pretty song. Um, like super pretty song. A lot of really like jazzy influences using major seven chords and things like that. You've got Kelly Clarkson. Beyonce's got Halo. Ooh, nice. Party in the USA came out in 2009. I didn't even know that. Vegas. Basically, my whole point of what I was saying to... Wow, look at these. I can't believe these songs. 2009? Birthday sex, Jeremiah. Oh, my God. So basically, uh, right, I'm just an idiot then. Okay, I'm just stupid. Just ignore me. My whole point was to say that when this, yeah, 2009 was a banger of tracks, but maybe this is why this wasn't like crazy, super big hit. I don't know how high this went in the, in the, 
in the um, in the charts. But if you think about it, like when he first came out, like Room for Squares and things like that, you've got like Jason Mraz, you've got John Mayer, you've got Nora Jones. Like Nora Jones was huge. I don't know if you guys listen to much Nora Jones. But you've got all of the, there's quite a lot, Your Body in the one. yeah, Your Body in the Wonderland. Um, your Body is a Wonderland Hot 100. Um, when did this single, when did this come out? Peak 2003. So it peaked at 18. So in 2003, so this is the era that John Mayer was coming up. You've got Christina Aguilera with Beautiful, Bam. You've got Jay-Z and Beyonce. They got Empire State of Mind coming out later on at that time. Today I'm not going to do I'll play I'm Yours, don't worry. Wow, you got Landslide by Dixie Chicks. There was just like Crimea River. Like that, Your Body is a Wonderland, Bam. You've got music that is so harmonically rich. I wonder if Nora Jones is on here or was she a bit later? I'm so not up, like I'm not, I don't pay much attention. To, I need to pay more attention to this kind of stuff. Like the music history is super important. It's something that I don't really focus on, but. Kelly Rowland, yeah. Skater Boy was 2003, what? Into Club, 50 Cent, yes. Oh my God. Uncle Cracker, let's go. Zephyr Song, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Wow, do you guys, Red Hot, Red Hot Chili Peppers? Yeah, you got Coldplay. There was just like a lot of people coming out that were just so harmonically good. Like, and when I say harmonically good, I mean like they, they were experimenting. They were not experimenting, but they were just, it was popular to play major seven chords. Like, like, come on. Like, that's all just like major sevens. You know, that is so not popular now. Like, you couldn't get away with that shit. He's got a bridge that's doing a flat three, a flat six, a flat two, and then a seven major seven. Anyway, my whole point was meant to say like, you know, you could do this kind of stuff back then and, and it would work. And like, he was the master of being able to put in, truly, I think John Mayer is just kind of one of the masters of being able to put in quite a complex harmony and then not make it step on the song, right? Because like take your body as a wonderland, right? Your body as a wonderland does modal interchange. So he goes... So he's got like the most basic progression you'll ever hear in your fucking life. It's a one, six, four, 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 one, and then a five, six, four, one. Yep. People get ready. Da -da 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 -da. Baby, last night was hanging. Like, it's just like so many hit songs do this one, six, four, one. And he did it. And then he brought in like a slight deviation with a five, six, four, one. So he's alternating between the two. And then in his chorus, when they don't care to a two, six back to a two, and we keep on waiting, it's five, six, waiting on the world to change, and then he goes into his bridge, which he just vamps on a four minor. Like, like, come on. Like, that song, so good. And then that bridge, like, so good. Like, you got to be really, really on. Like, really on as a writer to be able to just, like, drop that kind of shit. And that's why I just love John Mayer's stuff. Like, the fact that he, he is going to push, like, what is popular in his time. And then he's going to, like, be like, yeah, I know that this is what's going to get me, like, the record label to like what I do. And, then, and what will make like fit on Billboard. 
And then he's like, but I can also add a little bit of this, which is going to get me more of what I want. And I'm like, I just think that that's so clever. And he, and he was, he just had like these, these like balls to do this kind of shit. Um, yeah. And, and, it, and they all led up to this one point, like, like led up to him getting like continuum, right? Like all of this experimentation and, and, and figuring this out. And then he gets to like, continuum where it's just like holy dude you've just like got it you know walt grace submarine test i know how good is that song but yeah anyway so clarity if we go back to ending it i'll, I'll clip this for if is this is this useful information is this a useful video for you guys i don't know if it's useful but i can clip this for you guys on youtube if, it, if it's helpful because i saw someone wanted to know how to play the song because I can either just clip the whole thing or I could um or do you want me to clip the whole thing of me talking about shit or do you want me to Brad oh you're off to work have a good day Brad stay safe um but yeah like clip it for the people all right I'll clip like the whole me learning it and um uh like, oh, coolie. So, do you want like the whole, whole thing me talking about from the start when I first started learning the song, or do you just want the uh, how to play the exact song? But yeah, I mean, this is the kind of stuff about music that I love. I just love this shit. I love looking at what makes this thing work. And John Mayer was just this dude. I mean, he still is this dude who just writes such great stuff. Um, and he's always finding ways to just like, just like absolutely kill it. Die telling yourself. Oh, I don't care about the views. I only care about what serves you guys. That's all that matters. So, but yeah, anyway, I'll post the whole thing. Screw it. So yeah, clarity. Um, if you're going to get the verse, four, one, so that's a G, D, and then the, the pre-chorus is exactly the same. And then if we're going to do the uh, the chorus, it's going to be a four, three, six, which is going to be a G, F sharp minor, and then a B minor. And then if we're going to do the bridge, it's a flat three, uh, flat three major seven, flat six major seven, flat two major seven to a seven major seven. And so that will be a F major seven to a B flat major seven, to an E flat major seven, to a D flat major seven. And then you're gonna come back into the song by going D into a G, and then you go back into the chorus, which is G, F sharp, B minor. And that is the quick way to play clarity. <laughs> as quick as I could make it for you guys. So there you go. Boom. <laughs>